Hi ladies and gentlemen, I hope everyone is doing well today. Um, so today we're looking at an intro to chemical reactions, the first chem quest in your unit 8 note packet. So um, for the first part, refer to the flowchart from class to help you with naming. Um, the next part, chemical reactions. Uh, again, uh, refer to what we did in class. What we did in class will help you with this. This is just the language. So again, naming will be very, very important. Uh, next. So next we come to some introduction on reactions. Um, so there are a bunch of definitions in here. Instead of writing all the definitions in the margins, what I figured I'd do this time is to um, put, put out this, uh, de this, uh, de the definitions on the front. Please pause the video, write down these definitions. If you have any questions about what some of the words say, please circle them and bring them into class. Uh, ask me what it says when you get a chance. So, uh, a little bit more about this information. So, the first thing, um, so this is an example of a chemical reaction. Uh, a couple of things I want to point out is that the reactants highlighted in pink are on the left side. The products highlighted in green are always on the right side. And when I say side, I mean the side of the arrow. So, the reactants on the left side of the arrow, products on the right side of the arrow. Next thing I want to talk about is this paragraph right here. So you, you will notice that all of our reactions are not balanced correctly, um, that the atoms don't line up. Excuse me, this means they're not following the law of conservation of mass and energy. Uh, once we get better at uh, actually completing reactions, we will then move on to balancing them. Uh, next. So next we have some information on diatomic molecules. So this is one of the definitions we just copied up front. Uh, diatomic molecule is a, when the substances uh, always need to be bonded to something, so they never want to be alone. Uh, you do you have seven uh, seven elements that are diatomic. Um, these elements will never be alone, and instead of being alone, they will bind to themselves. So you have bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Uh, I always re remember uh, Brinkelhoff, kind of like a silly uh, way to remember these, Mr. Brinkelhoff. Um, you spell it out, and obviously it's the seven diatomic molecules. Uh, that is why when we look up at this problem right here, that it is H2 and not just H, hydrogen is on our list, so it needs to bind to itself instead of being alone. Uh, remember that when you are moving on. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about, um, I want to talk about single placement reactions. So a single replacement reaction is when a single atom replaces an ion in a different reactant. So if you look at these, uh, these two examples of reactions, um, so a couple things that I did is I listed the charge. So um, when the atoms swap, the positive ions will always switch with positive ions. Um, so the, the same charge of the ion trades places. In this case, they're all positive. I'm pretty sure in this packet we're all dealing with positive. Uh, on the practice, there are some negative ions. Uh, if there's two negative ions, then the two negative ions switch places. We still need to follow all of the ionic bonding rules. And then when we switch places, make sure that we crisscross. So you can see, I started off by labeling all of the charges. Um, as we can tell, the, the, the two positives will change because they are the same charge. So the silver and the potassium trade places. Uh, when you bind the silver and the chlorine, make sure you crisscross. Crisscrossing to make sure we have a balanced uh, formula, that it's neutral. So the crisscross is important. That's why it's AgCl. In the next case, we did the same thing. We wrote the charges out. We figured out what's going to swap. It's calcium and magnesium because they both have a positive 2 charge. And then when they swap, the... Uh, positive 2 goes on the fluorine, the negative 1 goes to the magnesium, so we get MgF2. Uh, remember, this is balanced. Remember to do the crisscross when you are combining new products. Um, so next, question 9. Question 9 and question 10 go together. So I figured I'd do 9, and then you guys can base what you do in 10 off of what I do in 9. So we have 9A. So it's asking us why can't NaMg produced? So remember, Na and Mg, they are both positive. So in ionic bonds, we do we cannot have two positives. So um, if they both swap, they will not bond together because they're not sharing their electrons and there's no opposite charge attracting them. Next, we're looking at why can't NaCl2 be produced. So remember, this, this reminds us that we need to crisscross when we combine our new elements. 
So when sodium and chlorine combine, they sodium has a positive one charge, chlorine has a negative one charge. So when we crisscross, there will be both ones for the subscript, so we don't have to write that. And then given our answers to A and B, do we think NaCl and Mg are the only products that we can produce? And the answer is yes. No other positive ions are present that can switch with the magnesium. Remember, the same sign charges have to switch. So now, base what I did, base what you do in 10 off of what I did in 9. Um, 11, 11 is very similar to the beginning. Uh, so again, use your naming uh, to help. Question 12. So remember, I already kind of told you this pattern. Uh, the pattern we see with single replacements is that a single atom always replaces an ion and a different reactant, um, and that the same signs switch. Uh, so again, question 12. Uh, just remember, a single atom switches place with a reactant. And then question 13. Question 13 is an example. So again, I did out 13A, so this will help you with B and C. So remember, the first thing to always do is identify the charges. So sodium has a positive one, chlorine has a negative one, silver has a positive one. So now we have to determine what's going to switch places. So silver has a positive charge, so it's going to switch with sodium because sodium has the other positive charge. So we know sodium is going to be alone, so we just write sodium. And then when we bind silver and chlorine together, we need to make sure to crisscross. So silver, positive one charge, chlorine, negative one. We crisscross, both subscripts are one, so we don't have to write them. So again, B and C, identify the charges, figure out what's going to switch based on having the same sign of the charge, and then when you uh, write your reactants, make sure to do the crisscross method. Uh, please circle any questions if you have them. Uh, remember to bring them to class. Uh, I hope everyone has a good evening.